All right, today what we're gonna do is do a directive draw and I'm gonna teach you how to draw the cover on the book, The Sky's the Limit, okay? okay. And so uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is start out with uh, um, the background where, uh, have y'all seen the cover of the book? Yes. Yes, so it's an airplane. Mm -hmm. What would be the background? Clouds. The clouds. So here we go. We're going to sketch first. And the way that you sketch, I want you to scratch. Don't bear down. Just feather, feather light marks on your paper. That way, if they're in the way of the um, composition that we're going to draw the airplane, then we can erase the lines and then start around it, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is do clouds. And the way that I want you to do those is that imagine the top of the clouds and just draw lightly like this. And the bottom is gonna, gonna kind of be a flat curve. But the top, if you can imagine, just a half circle around, okay? So clouds are kind of everywhere. And these are more animated clouds than real clouds. So they don't, they don't have to be perfect. All right, can I show you this, Connor? Can you see it down there? See those? Yeah, did you see, Maria? Mm -hmm. Marie, yes, okay. And so we're just going to kind of draw those everywhere because we don't have the airplane yet. So when we put the airplane in there, we don't want it to look like we drew the clouds around the airplane. So have some of them go off of the page like this. Do you see this? Okay. All right. Yay. Tell me when your page is almost full. Oh, you got it, Connor? Okay. Good job. Good job, Nicholas. Good job, Nathan. Thank you. Connor, you did a great job sketching. Your lines are feather lines, and that's what you want. Okay, is everybody about there? Mm -hmm. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to ignore the clouds, because this is going to be our background, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to put the airplane in, and it's going to be in the top half of the page, a little bit coming down. And so the way that we're going to do this, if you can imagine... The plane is going to be the biggest part of our picture. And so um, about two inches in on each side, just visual line those lines right here. And I would go ahead and draw, boom, boom. See what I've did? Two little lines here and here. And this is just to measure our airplane so it can kind of be um, centered, okay? And now we're going to do the tail of the airplane and work toward the beginning. The way that I did the tail on the airplane is I made it really simple. Kind of looks like this. It's a big half hook. And then it's going to go, whoops, up. Sorry about that. Up. And then this part goes down. I'm going to show you this line, and then going toward the front of the airplane, we're going to go down to our measurement line. And so this is the top of the airplane. See that? Does anybody want to see this? Can I turn it around? Okay. Got it? And this is really an animated airplane. I don't think you'd want to get in this and go over a hill. I mean, a big mountain with it. Go off of a mountain. All right, everybody got that? Now we're going to do the bottom of the airplane. This is going to, this the tail of the airplane is going to go down to almost where the seat is going to be. Okay, just an angled line. You got that? An angled line. 
There you go. Okay, and then what we're going to do is straighten the line out to just past where the little seat is going to be. See, just right to there. And now we're going to angle it back up to the nose of the plane. So now, see, we have the body of the plane. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, from here, what we're going to do is imagine a really skinny cigar with two ends like this. We're going to put the shape of a cigar right there on the end of the plane, which is actually the nose of the plane. Okay? Or a hot dog. Imagine a hot dog. <laughs> Alright, there we go. And now what we're going to do is kind of decorate the plane just a little bit. So I put um, stripes on the back on the tail of the plane right here okay what else does a plane need? Um, it's, wings. it's wings and this is how we're going to do the wings on the bottom half of the body of the airplane right in the center we're going to draw just a straight line draw lines young man draw lines and it's going to go right in the center. Do you see that line? Everybody see the line? Yeah? Okay, now we're going to angle some more lines going back. And this is another angled line, and it's going to go down. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. There's that line. Everybody see the angled line? Okay. All right, and now we're going to match that with another line like that. Boop. So, oh my goodness, we're already starting to see a little bit of dimension, aren't we? All right, we're gonna go back after we get the sketch on here and erase some of our sketch lines to make it a little bit more dimensional. All right, in the seat of the airplane, now we're gonna draw the little um, pilot. If you'll imagine his body, where his body is, right in the center, we're going to draw his head, and that's just going to be a circle like that. You see that? See the circle? All right. Then we're going to put his shoulder back, and then the front part, I'll show you how I did this coming out, to the, I don't know what that's called, the steering wheel of the plane? Is that what, or the control, maybe? The control. control? Okay. Yeah. All right, do you see how I did the front? It looks like his arms are going up to the control of the plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're going to give him a little bit of character, but we're going to put a flying hat on him. Okay, and we're that's going to be that brown leather thing that they used to wear, you know. And then he's going to have goggles. Goggles on like this. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. See the little hat and the little goggles? All right, from the goggle, we're going to make a nose. Because it kind of looks funny, doesn't he, with a round head? Those are just our guidelines. So we're going to go out with a little bit of nose. Right under his goggle. Then you're going to create a little chin down there. Okay? These are just our little sketch lines. Alright, now his arms are up here. Now this sketch is about good to go. We're going to keep adding some things onto the plane. Alright, usually a plane like this has a little bit of a top, right? Or at least mine does. So above the line where we have this one wing, we're going to draw toward the front of the airplane another horizontal line this way. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. This line? Is everybody with me? Mm -hmm. All right. And then up above the airplane, above the pilot's head, we are going to draw another horizontal line. 
that goes a little bit over his head, like right at the tip. Do you see that? Okay, everybody's got that. All right, this line, we're going to go ahead and um, make this a little thick. So imagine a real skinny loaf of Cuban bread. <laughs> so that's what we want this to look like. See that? Okay, now I'm getting hungry for a sandwich. Who else is? Me. <laughs> okay, and the bottom horizontal line, it needs another loaf. Whoa, that's going to be fun. Too much food. Too much food. And now we're going to take the um, letter N and we're going to slant it just a little bit. And I want you to watch this. Boom. Boom. Do you see the letter N? Mm -hmm. See the letter N? Okay. And that's the hardware to hold this together. So we're also going to thicken those lines. Okay. All this is going to make sense when we put some color into it. I'm going to make my... All right. Now what we're going to do before we start shading this in, oh wait, I see something missing. If this plane landed, what would it need? Wheels. Wheels! So out front, here we go, we're going to do a wheel here, and it's almost like a triangle. Do you see that on the front of the plane, just like this? See that? Mm -hmm. Triangle, and we're going to end that with a wheel. Okay, and on the back, same thing. Think in the shapes of triangles. Boom. And another wheel. So I think we have a completed plane. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. All right, now what I want you to do is let's go back and see our sketch lines that kind of overlapped. I had a little bit of my cloud involved in my plane there. So I'm going to go back and erase that. Erase those lines. They kind of overlapped. Some of them don't, and that's okay. Okay. Oh, and then in the wing, be sure to get the bottom of that um, plane erased in your wing. Now we got some dimension going on. All right, before we do anything else, why don't we get our black Sharpies and let's go over what we've drawn because. From here on out, what we're going to do is fill it in with some color, and then we're going to do some shading to make it look a little more real. So um, once you've gotten all your sketched lines um, out of there, and clean it up just a little bit, then I want you to take your Sharpie and go back over your lines, just like this. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Huh? I said I think it's on. Good. What about the thing to make it look like it's turning? It's the um, propeller is turning. Oh, we're gonna do that in just a minute. I don't think we're gonna have to sketch that on there. Um. All right, we'll get all these lines drawn in, and then before we put the color on there, I'll show you what to do with that propeller.
And this, I've chosen uh, crayons for us to do with this one because it's more uh, animated. The next one that we do, we'll do together with pastels, but I like crayons for this piece. When you get to the propeller, what we're going to do is you're going to circle it just like this. And then to create movement on the inside, we're going to go back with just real thin, not complete circles, but some circles like this. And on the outside, we're going to do that. We're just going to give it little circles around there. And this makes you think, ah, that must be moving. Do you see? Just little lines on the inside, not complete circles on the inside, but just broken circles. Flat circles, actually. Okay? And then after we do that, we're going to color it in and have some fun. For the book, I chose a red airplane. And so could you pass me a red color? I'm going to go ahead and put some color on mine. Oh, that's fine. That was, that was just fine. Yeah. And when I'm coloring, I'm covering, coloring, um, just putting a, about a medium pressure on the crayon because I want to go back and shade it a little darker. So I'm going to show you how to do that to give it the effect that it's three-dimensional. Okay, once I have the color on my plane, what I'd like to do, um, could you hand me the brown, is to take a um, color that is a little darker as well, and then I'm going to, from the airplane wing all the way across horizontally, that would be the bottom of the plane. I'm going to give it a little darkness by choosing maybe a brown or a gray, like this. So that it just gives the illusion of this is further south and it's not getting as much light as the top part of the plane. Then I'm going to go back and deepen the color just a little bit. Now I'm going to blend this up. So see? It's darker underneath. Can you see that? So you can go ahead and get your colors. I chose red for an airplane. If you guys decide you want a green airplane, that's fine too. Just don't choose blue because we have a blue sky. And then I'm going to paint his little helmet or hat brown. There we go. Nathan, could you pass me the black and the gray? Oh, do we get the black out? Or the dark gray is fine. Since I don't have a black, I'm going to make my wheels. I'm going to go ahead and paint those in black. Or color those in. Not a problem. Mm. 
Nicholas, could you pass me the yellow and the blue? Thank you. Um, if you want to go ahead and start on your sky, you can start on your sky, Connor. And what I would do around the clouds, we're going to paint the whole paper, which is called a full composition, in blue. So all the background, we can go ahead, if you don't have the red color yet, go ahead and lightly color in the sky around the clouds. It's really light blue, so hardly any pressure at all on the crayon. So you keep it nice and light. Whenever you have a piece of paper and there is art from side to side and top to bottom, it is called a full composition. So today we're doing a full composition. My airplane looks like a bandana. Hey, that's okay. It's your airplane, isn't it? And be sure to put the sky where it makes sense, like behind the little man in between the clouds. And even through the, you don't want to paint your um, propeller where this cloud is. You don't want to paint that blue, but the sky goes through the propeller in between my clouds. So I'm going to paint that part or color that part blue. You guys can tell that I paint all the time. Mm -hmm. That's that's my um, medium of choice is painting. So. I'm enjoying the change of pace today by coloring. Okay, now I've got some color in the sky. I'm going to also color in his face just a little bit. And then the I think I'm going to do that dark blue. Nathan, would you hand me a dark blue? Um, um, yeah, one of those dark ones. There you go. Sure. That's good. Put some color on here. Let my hardware be the top of the plane be blue. And then on the cloud, just because I'm going to put in some gray for some dimension, I'm going to go ahead and color my clouds white. That will help the gray blend just a little better. Fun. Me too. And you know when you color, you always color in one direction, right? Alrighty, 
Now I'm going to take the gray, and Nathan, you're, you're my, like, assistant surgeon. You know, like in the operating room, you always have a technician that hands you your tools. You just happen to be right there. All right, in my clouds, you want to see my picture so far? Ta-da! That looks good. Okay, then in the clouds, I've already colored those in white because I want to go back and give the bottom side of my clouds some dimension. When you're coloring and doing any kind of artwork, you always have to imagine where your source of light, I call it my sun, where is my sun going to be? Well, we're up in the clouds, so it's even going to be further. So the darkness of my clouds are going to be where? On the bottom. And so I'm going to take gray, and I'm just going to make, like, flat views on my bottom here. Just to give it some dimension. Do y'all see that? See the little... Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I'm going to do that to all my clouds, just on the bottom, like flat U-shapes. Kind of layer them in there a little bit. And make my clouds look a little fluffy. I like fluffy stuff. Okay. How are y'all doing? Good. Good. I think the sky is the longest part. Yes, it is. Okay. Just take your time and then do all of your coloring in one direction and it will make your um, end results look a whole lot neater. So, so far today we've learned what a full composition is, we've learned about a source of light and where the shadows fall when you have a source of light. Like if your source of light is on the left side, if your sun is there, where would your shadow be? On the right. On the right. It's always the opposites. Okay. And then um, we've learned how to shade and give dimension and make it a little three-dimensional by just using a little uh, trick or two with some lines. And it makes the propeller look like it has movement. Awesome job, everybody.